If you missed my class last week or any of the following weeks, no worries. I believe that they are being um, uploaded to YouTube, Flushington's YouTube. But I'll go over, you know, a little bit of what I've been talking about in every class. I feel like with makeup, practicing is the biggest, most important thing. So hearing certain things over and over again kind of help to remind you, you know, to do things a little bit differently than you normally do. I know even sometimes I forget. We get used to doing our makeup a certain way. What, like when we're 16, 17, 18 years old and then our face starts changing, things start changing, and it gets more difficult to use the same products. I'll talk about why that is, but um, yeah, it's, it's hard. We kind of get set in our ways. <clears throat> we get used to doing our makeup a certain way or seeing ourselves a certain way. Uh, make sure you grab all of your eye makeup. We're going to be going full out today with the Summer Smoky Eye. I'll give us about five more minutes to get everybody on. Oh, there we go. In the chat, if you missed any of my previous classes, you can um, go down to the link in the chat box. If you have questions throughout this class, feel free to shout them out, or you can add them to the chat box. Um, one thing you guys might want to try if you're having trouble seeing me or seeing a bunch of different people, um, Number one, make sure you're on mute and make sure that in the top right hand corner of your Zoom screen, um, you go ahead and look for the active speaker icon or the option. And that way you can see me in the biggest screen while you're trying to follow along with me. Otherwise, I know it will all be like squinting in the little boxes trying to see what we're doing. I also recommend having like a handheld mirror, hand mirror. I do have one for myself so that I can see what I'm doing. I'm not uh, talented or, or have the eyesight ability to be able to see myself in the computer screen. So I do recommend having a mirror next to you. you have setting spray, you might want to grab that. We're going to be doing another uh, setting spray trick again today. I showed everybody last week. Again, if you missed it, you can go ahead and hit the link in the chat at the end of this class and you can revisit my prior classes. This is the fourth class in a four-part series and it will be my final class. So, you know, bittersweet. Hopefully I'll see you guys again. But um, I do have my coworker Eduardo taking over and starting his own four part series next week. So make sure you don't miss that because the more information you get and from the more people you get it from, the better. We all have different experiences and different specialties. Even as a makeup artist now working in the industry for over eight years, um, there are still things that I learn every day, especially from my fellow Blushington artists. I actually enjoy taking their classes whenever I can, <clears throat> even though I'm a professional. Great. Awesome. So it looks like a lot of people were able to get on. I'm sure we'll have a few late stragglers and that is totally okay. If you miss something or have a question, feel free to put it in the chat box, but let's go ahead and get started. First, um, everyone go ahead and put yourself on mute. That way um, you don't interfere or if you have loud background noises. Um, number two, check your Zoom and take a look at speaker view or at the very top right in your Zoom dialog if you're on a computer. There's a speaker view option and that will make sure that I am the one that you're looking at even though we've got so many people who are joining. If you have a question, no worries. You can always put it in the chat box or take yourself off of mute. And uh, before we get started, I'll kind of give you guys a little bit of a background about myself if you've missed any of my classes so far. 
My name is Sloan. I'm a senior makeup artist at Blushington. I started at the West Hollywood location and have worked at all of the Southern California locations. Uh, we have six different lounges all over the U.S. in New York, Dallas, um, and L.A. We are known for being the premier destination for makeup, skincare, eyebrows, and uh, dry styling. So if you've got any questions about those kinds of things, we are your go-to place. While our lounges are temporarily closed, we're proud to bring the Blushington experience to you virtually. We've designed a platform that allows clients from all over the country to book classes with our experts in the comfort of their own homes, which is awesome because we're really missing being in person with our clients right now. So um, without further ado, um, I would also like to talk about Eduardo. He is one of my amazing coworkers, and he's going to be taking over my four-part series starting next week. So if you've been uh, enjoying my classes for the last month, I've had, this is my fourth one and my last one, then I'm sure you're going to enjoy his. He's a skincare specialist, and uh, I've just learned so much from him. So definitely make sure that you sign up for his classes as soon as we conclude the class today. Um, I will probably be joining as a client to be learning from him. So um, today we're going to be talking about eye makeup. Uh, we did a little bit of eye makeup last week, and we talked about eye shape and eye color and kind of things that we need to do to help lift our eyes up. We're going to be continuing that today, but today we're going to be going into a daytime summer smoky eye, something that is easily bumped up. Um, because last week I worked from one of my very favorite palettes and a set that is currently on sale at Blushington.com, we're going to be continuing with that and talking about the same products because... I like to be versatile, so if you did end up purchasing this last week, maybe your order's already in and you can follow along with me. This is the Soft Glam Palette. Um, if you like warmer uh, tones or deeper colors, I would definitely suggest getting the same palette in the Modern Renaissance, which I am dying to buy myself. I'll probably be doing that very soon. But we wanna get started with our eyeshadow primer. If you don't have eyeshadow primer, that's totally okay. You can use concealer. But if you are having issues with the longevity of your makeup or feel like your eyeshadow gets smudgy or it doesn't stay put or maybe it just doesn't look as bright or as pigmented as it did when you first put it on by 2 p.m., then I would definitely recommend trying a eyeshadow primer. The one that I have with me today comes in the kit um, or in the bundle that's online that will be linked in the chat after the class. Uh, mine has worn off all of the writing, so that's how much I use it, but it is the Jouer um, Brightening Eyeshadow Primer. It works like a charm. It brightens up your eyes without having to be too creamy like concealer can be. Um, that way you don't crease. And you know, we all have a little bit of darkness naturally on our eye that we wanna cancel out before we go ahead and put on our first eyeshadow anyway. What I love about eyeshadow is that you can really be as creative as you want because there's no rules. You can use 10 colors, you can use one color, you can use three colors, and if it's blended well enough, nobody should be able to tell where one color starts and where it stops or the next one starts and we'll talk about blending today a lot. So first, um, if you did use a concealer for a primer, you're gonna want to go over your eyeshadow with a neutral powder, translucent, or something very close to your skin. If you don't have any eye, um, face powder, you can also use a neutral toned eyeshadow. You're gonna wanna use a packing brush. I talk about this a lot, but you know, if you are someone who is trying to get serious about makeup or just get serious with doing your own makeup so that you don't have to always have someone, you know, to rely on before a big event, especially now with the way that the pandemic has been. I know for me, I've been trying to learn how to do things that I didn't used to do myself, like my nails. So if that's something that you're trying to do, I would really suggest getting brushes because as much as Q-tips and fingers are amazing, um, Brushes are made for a reason. They all do different things. And if you're trying to get a different technique or a different blending uh, skill, you're going to want to use different tools. 
but this is a packing brush. You can see how much powder I have on here. I am gonna tap it off a little bit on my wrist and you can see the excess powder actually leaving. And I'm going to dust that on my entire lid and I'm gonna bring it all the way up into my brow. The reason you wanna do this is because that powder creates a nice um, layer above your primer or above your concealer, whatever you decided to use. And it really just helps all of the colors blend nicely. If you've ever had a situation where your makeup kind of gets stuck in one spot or you feel like it just isn't blending out, <clears throat> oh, excuse me, then um, I would really recommend using a neutral tone or skin tone shadow all over before you get started. Perfect. And there is a link that was just posted down in the chat um, with the brushes that we sell at Blushington, which is what I'm using today by Bedalium. I really want to get that neutral tone or bright powder in the inner corner of my eye. Everybody is different. If you do have eyes that are a bit more wide apart than mine, then you are very lucky and you kind of have free reign on what you want to do with your inner corners. Um, however, for those of you who are like me and have, you know, very close set eyes and the shadow that you get created by your nose, then you definitely want to get the inner corner really bright as possible and you want to avoid any dark tones in this area because we don't want it to look darker. Once we have our first tone on, you're going to want to go in with a brush that is a little bit more um, tapered and something smaller so you can have more control. You can use a Q-tip if you'd like um, or your finger. Personally, I feel for blending, the finger works a bit better. But here you can see this is a tapered brush. This brush is number 783 from Bedellium Tools, also found in the brush set that has been linked below. For your second color or your transition tone, you're gonna wanna find something that is one to two shades darker than your skin tone. You could use a bronzer, you could use an eyeshadow. I'm actually gonna go in with a bronzer today. This is by Galactic from Blushington. Probably my favorite bronzer ever, just because it has a little bit of a gray shadow to it so I don't look orange or like I have a bad fake tan, um, but like I naturally got this color. So like I've said this before, um, you don't want to follow your crease all the way to the outside corner of your eye if you're trying to make your eyes look larger. I'm going to have you go right to the middle of your eye where your crease is. So if you want to feel around for that brow bone, your bone is exactly where you're going to want to put that color. And instead of following your eye all the way down in the shape of your eye, you're just going to bring it straight out. So you're just gonna go straight out. And that's because we're pretty much creating a new crease or a new eye shape. Even, even um, though I'm a professional, I still find myself holding my brush like this sometimes. And really and truly when you're blending, you should hold it at the back of the brush because you have a little bit more of a light hand while blending. Sometimes if we hold our brush too much like a pencil, we can be too rough with ourselves. And that's when you start to see kind of, you know, lines. So right at the edge, I'm blending it out because I don't want it to go into my eyebrow, but I do want to blend it out towards the eyebrow. That way, I'm taking the attention off of where my, my eye actually dips down and creases because you want this color to be a little bit above your crease. Like I said, where that bone is, where you feel that bone, that's where you should place that color. Once you don't have too much color left on your brush, you can start to use the excess to dip down into the inner corner, but not all the way. You really want to avoid the nose area. We've all been there and gotten like smoky eyeshadow on our nose and it just looks like we got punched in the face. So um, let's stay away from that. Are there any questions so far? Does anyone, is anyone struggling with this part or have questions? 
about maybe a color that they're trying to use or a bronzer. Because this is a summertime thing, that is also one of the reasons why I'm using a bronzer. This is the same bronzer that I used on my face. Um, and I feel like that really just ties the whole look together. Always like check yourself in the mirror because nobody's eyes are even. Um, even for myself, I have one eye that is a little bit more upturned than the other. So when I do a winged liner, if I'm not careful, one looks like it's pointed up straight, one looks like it's going straight out. I know some of you guys have that problem too. You're not alone. Um, but that's exactly why you have to really focus and look at yourself in the mirror and kind of keep tweaking like that. It's much better to have a light hand and keep adding as you go. You know, oh, it's not even here. Let's add more here. Oh, it's not as dark here as it is over there. Let's add that there. It's much easier to add as you go as opposed to putting way too much on, which we've all done, and then not being able to blend it out. No, there's a, a line that you cross where nothing but a makeup wipe can help you, and we want to avoid that. If you are struggling to blend, I suggest getting a clean brush or a clean finger or a clean Q-tip and going right back and blending towards the inside of your eye. As you can see, I'm not trying to blend outwards. A lot of people make the mistake of going like this, but what happens is you blow out your makeup so much that sometimes it gets up into your eyebrow or it starts to take on a strange shape. So if you kind of go like this, holding the end of your brush when it's clean, using that first color that we put all over our lid to kind of buff the edges of our shadow or our bronzer and kind of using your bone, your brow bone as a guide to blend. That way you don't get it into your brow or get it too much, too blown out. Now that I have that, I'm actually going to go in with a little bit of blush I think blush is the answer to everybody's summertime look. This is one of my very favorite blushes. I actually love this blush so much that I have it in both colors. I don't know if you guys are any makeup, makeupaholics like me, <laughs> but I definitely went and got both colors uh, because I love them both so much. I love blush. I didn't used to. I thought it made me look like a clown, but now I feel like I don't even look alive without blush, especially on camera. So you do have to be careful with it because we don't want to make ourselves look sunburned, but a little bit of sun kissed is good. I am going to add a little bit right above where I placed my bronzer. And this is really just for that sun kissed glow. I do suggest using the same blush that you plan on using on your face. And I know it's gonna sound crazy, but I dare you to go outside of your comfort zone with blush. A lot of people are scared of different colors. They kind of think, oh, I have to have the traditional pink or the traditional nude. But like this is, this is called sunset. And this has got a lot of orange in it, lots of coral in it. And honestly, you should be basing your blush off of your skin tone. Are you a cool, do you look better with cool tones or do you look better with warm tones? That's what you should be using to determine what blush you're using. And that will actually make a huge difference in your eye makeup as well. Same thing if you feel like, you know, you didn't, you didn't blend very well. Um, as a beginner, you can always just grab a clean brush and follow your bone. That will help you blend out. As you can see here, I've got a really nice blended out, uh, blown out look just with blush and bronzer. I haven't even touched my eyeshadow yet except for my first color. Now I'm going to go in with this Sienna, which is one of my very favorite colors. I used it last time as well. I'm gonna go in with a pencil brush because it's very tiny. Again, you're gonna find this in the brush set linked in the chat. I'm gonna be very careful with this one. This is where we're gonna start to create a V and connect our lash line to our 
crease. So you're gonna start at the lash line, and once again, you're gonna go towards your lashes, towards the inside corner of your eye, and you're gonna kind of bring it up and marry that color up into your crease, creating like a very soft V. If you get too much, if you feel like, oh no, I got too much eyeshadow, just keep blending that into your um, lash line almost as if it were eyeliner. Just try not to get past the middle of your eye if possible. If you do, it's not a huge deal. It's totally fixable. Everything in makeup is. I'm sorry, I have a question. Um, what color should we be doing this with? Um, so I would say go in with something that is going to be warm compared to your skin tone. So um, if you're on the cooler side, you might want to use more of a gray, more of a gray toned um, brown. And let me show you what I mean here. So these would be cool tone browns. Okay. Yeah. Please forgive my my mess, <laughs> I use these palettes a lot. But this is a cool tone brown. It's really important that people know the difference because sometimes not, not everybody looks good in red, not everybody looks good in orange. If you feel like you're a little bit on the red side as it is and you feel like maybe those colors make you look more to, like, too warm, then I would definitely go in with this. This is also a great idea for your bronzer. Um, if you want to have a cooler bronzer, I suggest going in with Cabo. Mine is called Casablanca, but there is a color called Cabo. And that is really great for paler skin and for anybody who is afraid to be too warm or looks like, you know, they have a bad tan if they put too much bronzer on. But it's a, it's a really, really great idea to go in with um, either cool or warm, but you want to stick to something very neutral, something similar to the shadow that you would naturally get in your eye. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Keep them coming. If anybody has a question, please shout it out. So this color, I am also going to bring down into my lower lash line. And if you guys have been watching my class, you know that I hate bringing in my under shadow all the way across because it closes my eye off. So I'm going to bring it to the middle of my eye on the under part of my eye. And now that I've done my neutral colors, I'm ready to play. I'm ready to play with my summertime colors. So today, because I have blue eyes, I'm going to be using burgundy, but burgundy looks great on an array of different eye colors. I'm gonna share my screen with you guys in just a, just a second. Give me one sec. Everybody, please take a peek right here. This is a really great uh, color chart for the colors of your eye. I know there's a lot of you and it would take me forever to go through and tell everybody what looks most flattering on their eye color. And believe me, honestly, anyone can wear any kind of eyeshadow, any color you want. Do not feel afraid to step outside of this chart. Um, it's just a really good rule of thumb for enhancing the natural colors in your eye. Um, but you can match your eyeshadow to your outfit you can match your eyeshadow to your hair. I used to have fire truck red hair. I used to do that. So you can totally do that. This is just a really good key, you know, for an everyday kind of a makeup and for a quick idea of what's gonna look best on you if you have questions. You by no means have to go in with like Barney purple if you have green eyes. Let me show you what I mean. In this Anastasia palette that I'm using, um, this color right here, Dusty Rose, is one of my all-time favorites. This is one of the most 
flattering neutral tones on anybody with a brown eye, a green eye, hazel eyes. It's amazing. It's not purple. It's got like purple hues, violet hues. So obviously, you know, the chart I'm showing you guys is a little bit extreme. Um, you don't have to go wearing lime green eye shadow every day, <laughs> but um, it's just a good rule of thumb to remember and it will help you guys out a lot. So we're almost done. I'm going to go in with my pencil brush once again because it's nice and small. Oh, and the link to my previous classes is above in the top of the chat, but I will make sure that they repost it again. Otherwise, you can always find my other classes um, on YouTube with Blushington, at Blushington's account. So I'm going to go in now with this mulberry right here, which is like a warm red tone. It also has some purple tones in it as well. So honestly, um, anybody who looks good in purple or the dusty rose could also rock this color. Now this I'm going in at the bottom of my lash line or my base of my lashes. And I'm really marrying that color into the blush and into the other colors that I've used. I really love burgundy um, for the fall and for the summer. This palette is great for both seasons in my opinion because the colors are very warm. Also keep in mind that colors are gonna have a different effect on everyone's skin tone. They're gonna look different on some people. This is a very true burgundy, but on my skin tone, it honestly reads as like a very red brown. So for me, this is a great alternative to brown or black for a different smoky eye. Now I want to get this nice dark burgundy also in my undershadow to give myself some balance. Awesome. I love it. I'm going to go ahead and blend just a bit. That's the key to everything in life, placement and blending. And my very favorite trick that you guys already know that I do probably every day because I just love glitter so much and I can't deal with the mess that it makes without setting spray. So if you've got a nice synthetic brush, um, this one also comes in the Bedellium brush set and a setting spray, any setting spray is fine, but if you're interested in the one that I have, this is called Slay All Day by Girard Cosmetics, and it is sold at blushington.com. It is vegan and cruelty-free. All of our brands, by the way, are curated by the owners of Blushington, and majority of them are all female-run brands. They're very good. Once you have a nice wet brush, you're gonna go into whatever shimmery shadow you're gonna use. Today, I'm gonna be using Sultry, and this, um, Setting spray with the glitter will create a liquid eyeshadow or like a liquid metal. You can still have some fallout, so be careful. Again, less is more. I kind of went in a little too hot there. <sighs> and I got some on my cheek. And you're gonna use that brush to really just move that liquidy shadow around. Like I said, you get kind of like a liquid metal look. If you do get fallout, you can just take a very nice big brush and just dust it away. If your brush is dry, spray it again for the other eye. And don't be afraid of shimmer. You can use more than one shimmer too. I usually do. Go big or go home, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and put that all over my lid, but I'm gonna be careful. I'm gonna be careful to blend the edges of it because I don't wanna ruin what I laid down earlier. The nice, beautiful, blown out blend that I had. Oh, amazing, obsessed. And then I would like to go in with a little bit of this fairy. 
because I want to brighten up this area of my eye just a bit because even though I love this color, once again, you know, I've already got some designer bags. That's what I call them. And we don't need to accentuate those by any means. So same thing, create your liquid shadow. And you can do this with any eyeshadow, by the way. I'm just obsessed with this palette because it has so many different usable ones. So I'm just going in and I'm brightening, brightening that up because that sultry is amazing, but it's not my favorite inner corner color on myself. I like it more on the lid. And you really want to get your inner corner, this little like shadowy part next to your nose, you really want to hit that with some bright, almost skin tone colored sheen or shimmer. And you can bring that shimmer down to meet the middle of your eye where you've already placed your undershadow. Last but not least, we got to do our lashes. I have a Stila smudge stick uh, twist up waterproof liner. I really like to get underneath my eyes because I'm not a huge fan of chunky liner on myself. I'm so jealous of girls who have like these big beautiful eyelids that you could do anything on. And I've definitely worn a wing and rocked it. But for my everyday, I prefer something like dramatic, but not like, you know, I don't want you to know that I spent an hour on my makeup. I want you to think that I woke up with gold eyelids and um, just imagine that I have these beautiful plush eyelashes every day when I go to sleep too. So if we could just keep that, we just keep that charade and I'm happy. <laughs> just kidding. But as you can see, I went ahead and lined that lined my eyes. I didn't line the entire eye. I only lined underneath. I am going to go in actually a little more at the edges, my un outside corner. Once again, if you are afraid of eyeliner, you can do what I'm doing and kind of close your eyes. Because as long as you've mastered where your lash line is, you're okay, I promise. You cannot forget this step. You definitely have to curl your eyelashes. I never did it when I was younger, but like I have stick straight hair and my eyelashes just go straight down like a camel. So it's really important to curl your lashes. It honestly makes a huge difference. You should be curling them in two spots. You should be curling at the base and at the tip. And then my all time favorite mascara, this is by Kevin Aquine. This is the Volume Mascara. I am a girl after volume, but this is really good for length too because look how skinny this thing is. You can really, really get in there. You can really get in there and get all of your lashes, which is why I'm so obsessed with it because it just feels, feels good. It doesn't flake. I have allergies. Flaking is the thing that bothers me the most. Most people do their mascara wrong. If you didn't know, you're supposed to twist your wrist while you are doing your mascara. I mean, I don't know if that's the rule, but that's how I do it and it works the best, I think. So basically you want to start at the base and you want to twirl your wand all the way to the tip of your lash. I promise it's gonna get the spots that you didn't even know you were missing. Another trick is yes, you do need bottom mascara for people who think you don't. If you have allergies, you can use an eyeshadow in place of an eyeliner and that will actually hold some of the mascara there so it doesn't smudge or, or bleed because that happens a lot. But, oops. but you definitely want to have a good mascara and a good lash curler. You do need to clean your lash curler. 
they don't last forever. Your makeup also expires. I know that's something people usually don't know. If you um, are questioning if your makeup or your mascara is expired and are wondering if that's why it's not working for you the way that it used to, my best suggestion would be to go ahead and take a look at any of your mascara or your any of your items and I'll show you right here. There's a little a little number here. You guys see the little container? If you guys all look at your makeup and there's a container on the back, there's a number in there. This one says 12M. That means 12 months. So if you can't remember the last time you bought a new mascara and you're wondering why your eyelashes are coming out really clumpy. <laughs> Check the expiration date because mascaras seem to um, have an expiration date that runs out a lot quicker than powder products. Same with your eyeliner. If you've been stabbing yourself in the eye with the same eyeliner for the last year, it's time for a new one. You wanna use the excess of your mascara for the bottom lashes because you don't wanna to get too much. And once again, you know, I don't go all the way in. I go about three fourths of the way. A little more than half, but I definitely wanna leave this area open. And you can use a highlighter, you can use whatever you want. But I pretty much, I pretty much love this look. I think it's great for a nighttime look. Um, I think it's good for a daytime look if you wanna do nighttime and you have this palette, my suggestion would be throwing in these two at the back. These are Cypress Umber and Noir. I did not use those colors at all. We stayed pretty light and bright for this eye makeup, and yet on my skin tone, it still looks kind of smoky. So what do you guys think? Did you try it? I would love to see what you guys are doing if anyone has done something fun on their eye today and wants to share or if anybody used the setting spray trick for the first time. How's everyone doing? I can't see anyone today. Sometimes people have, you know, I can see. Oh, perfect. Autumn, your eyes look beautiful. Wow. I was really nervous it wasn't going to come out right, and then I looked at it when I was done, and I was like, oh my god, it does look good. It looks so good. What colors did you use? Um, I used, so like when you said uh, Cypress, I just took like a brown out of this old CVS, or Ulta, that's what it was, an Ulta palette, and then I used, I used this one too, this Poppy from Ace Butte. Oh my gosh, I love that color. Isn't it beautiful? It's beautiful. I love it. Yeah, it came out really good. good. That was a great lesson too. Thank you. Thank you. I'm so glad that everyone could follow along. I know I tried to get it all in, but it's my last class, so I really wanted to leave you guys with um, and the ability to do your own makeup. Lana, your eye makeup looks beautiful. What did you do different today? Um, well, I... I was, I'm not at home, so I didn't have all my normal makeup, so I, all I had was, like, a tiny palette this big, like, I have better ones at home, so I kind of had to go with it, I didn't really, I had, like, six colors, and they were all, like, glitter, so it's a little hard, but. It um, had to make it work, it looks really good, so whatever you did is definitely yeah. working. This was all I had, hang on, I'll try to turn my camera around, um, this was all I had, so. I tried. I, I love that. I, but that's why you love palettes because that way you don't have to carry a bunch of different things. I feel like yeah. if I can find an eyeshadow palette that I can use for many different things, then I'm totally for it. So, I mean, you did yeah. a great job. I think it looks amazing. Thank Autumn, you. your eyes look amazing. Um, if you are brave enough, I would love to see anyone else's if you want to share your makeup today. Thanks, Margaret. Oh, you guys are awesome. I love seeing your, your pictures too. Well, you know what? If you guys take some really great selfies, tag us, tag Blushington. I would love to see what you're doing. Oh my gosh, look, we've got some girls up here. You guys look beautiful. Did you guys participate today? No, you don't need to. <laughs> your, your makeup is beautiful the way it is with nothing, the way that you were born. 
<laughs> they're taking lessons they're having fun <laughs> it's never too early to learn I remember being in dance recital and my mom being like you're on your own girl I don't know how to do this <laughs> <laughs> thank you that was fun awesome well it was such a pleasure being with you guys today thank you so much for uh getting through this with me and starting with me from beginning to end if you were somebody who watched my classes back at when I first started um in class number one. Once again, if you missed those, those are available on Blushington's YouTube. All of the products we talked about today are available at blushington.com as well. So don't forget to go and pick those up. Pick those up. They're on sale also right now for a really good sale. Once again, if you have a deeper skin tone, I would suggest going for the Modern Renaissance palette instead of the Soft Glam but Soft Glam is really great and versatile as well. I hope you guys had fun today. And don't forget that Eduardo, my coworker, and one of my favorite Blushington makeup artists is gonna be taking over and doing a four part series starting next week on Wednesday. I'll be there with you learning. So I hope to see you guys then. Have a good day.